Hello and welcome back to the fifth and final day of our Vacation Bible School here at Emmanuel Evangelical Lutheran Church. My name is Pastor Joe Nauman and this week we have been considering the theme Christ over viruses, infections, and disease. This week we've been asking all kinds of questions of our God about sickness. Because there's this major sickness going around in our world called COVID-19 or the coronavirus, there's a lot of questions that we have about sickness. And fortunately for us, God gives us a lot of answers to those questions in his word. This week we've looked at four specific questions already. We've asked the question, why is there sickness? And we went back to the Garden of Eden to our first parents, Adam and Eve, and saw how they were tempted by the devil to fall into sin. And that because they fell into sin, you and I now bear the curse of that sin. We are affected by that sin, and one of the effects of that sin is sickness. Then we went to the Old Testament, to Numbers chapter 21, and looked at the story of the fiery serpents, how God sent these snakes to his people who were complaining about him while they were in the wilderness. And in this story, the fiery serpents bit the people and they were dying. And we asked the question, why did God allow this to happen? Why does God and how does God use sickness? And the answer is God uses sickness to turn his people back to him. That's what he did with the fiery serpents, and that's what he continues to do for us today. He tells, he uses sickness and disease to help us to more fully rely on him as the only one we can truly trust in. Then on Wednesday, we asked the question, who has power over sickness? And we looked at a miracle of Jesus when he healed the centurion's servant. And we looked at the centurion and how he had so much power, power to tell soldiers to go and to come. But then when the centurion couldn't do anything about sickness, he turned to Jesus. And it's the same thing for you and I. You and I have no power to cure or to make sickness or disease go away, but we know that Jesus has the power. We know that he has all authority in heaven and on earth, and so we have nothing to be afraid of. And when sickness and disease does come our way, we can follow the centurion's example and go to Jesus in prayer. Then finally, yesterday, we asked the question, what's the worst sickness of all? And we looked at a bunch of sicknesses that this world has, malaria, cancer. And we looked at the Bible account of a man who had a pretty bad sickness. He was paralyzed, and yet Jesus caused him to walk again. But then we concluded that the worst sickness of all is sin. And it's a sickness that all of us have. And yet because of the person and work of Jesus Christ, we recognize that we are forgiven. That this worst sickness of all sin has been washed away through the blood of Jesus Christ. And because of what he did for us, we are now seen as perfect by God. So we've talked a lot about sickness this week. But today, on our fifth and final day, we want to ask the question, when will sickness be no more? When sin sickness is going to be gone forever? Because it's not something fun. It's not fun to have a headache or a stomach ache. It's not fun to be going through pain and difficulty, chemotherapy, broken arms and legs. These are all things that we face here in this world because there is sickness. It's not something that we enjoy. It's a consequence of sin. So is there any hope? Is there a light at the end of the tunnel? Is there something that we can look forward to? A time when there will be no more sickness? Today we're going to take a look at the last book of the Bible, the book of Revelation, because in the book of Revelation, God gave to the Apostle John a glimpse, a look into a time that is yet to come, into a place that you and I have yet to go. And in this time and in this place, there will be no sickness. There will be no sorrow. There will be no sadness. There will be no death or sin, because it will have been wiped away forever. That place is heaven. So we're going to now pray to God that he would bless our study today as we ask this question, when will sin be no more? As we look at what we can expect in this heavenly kingdom, let's pray. Lord Jesus, we pray that you would bless us today as we study your word. Help encourage us to grow and to look forward to that wonderful day when you will give us our eternal rest. We pray in your name. Amen. Do you remember how many disciples Jesus had? That's right. He had 12 disciples. And one of those disciples was the Apostle John. 
John was probably one of the youngest members of all 12 of the apostles, and yet he was also a very close friend of our Savior Jesus. He was one of the inner circle of disciples, Peter, James, and John. These three men were invited when Jesus went to the Mount of Transfiguration, and they were also invited to come closer when Jesus went to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray. John lived the longest, we believe, of all the apostles. He lived into the ninth decade of the first century AD, into the 90s AD. And it was then that the Lord Jesus and the Holy Spirit moved him to write the Gospel of John, to write the three epistles of John, and also to write the Revelation of John. You see, John lived into a difficult time for Christianity. John lived to the time and period when there was great persecution of Christ and his church throughout the Roman world. John, in fact, was uh, someone who suffered of this persecution. He was exiled, exiled to an island called Patmos. And it was there on this island that no doubt John began to be worried and anxious about the message and the church that he had left behind. No doubt he had questions and doubts about why the Lord would allow him to go through this difficult time. And in the middle of all this doubt and worry, the Lord Jesus came and visited him in person. We're told that Jesus appeared to John in glory and John fainted away. It was too much for him to handle. And yet after the Lord helped him recover from that fainting, the Lord gave him a vision, a revelation of what judgment day and what heaven will be like. At the very end of this book of Revelation, in chapter 21, which is the second to last chapter, we read about this picture of heaven, and this will be our Bible lesson for today. We read from Revelation 21. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Right, for these words are true and faithful. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give of the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. This is a vision of what heaven will be like. Here heaven is called the New Jerusalem. If you remember from studying the Old Testament, Jerusalem was the capital of the nation of Israel. It was where God had his temple built. And it was there in Jerusalem, and specifically at the temple, where God lived. That was where the children of Israel were to go and to worship him. But here we read about not the old Jerusalem from the Old Testament, but a new Jerusalem. The new Jerusalem was not some place here on earth. Rather, it's a description of heaven and of the people of God. And we're told here that the people of God come as a bride adorned for their husband. This is a picture that God uses in the Bible. Just as a husband and a wife get married and they live together, God willing, happily forever as God wants them to, in the same way you and I are called Christ's bride. We are called his his wife. And that means that he wants to come together with us in perfect unity forever. Now, because we're sinners here on earth and because of the consequences of sin like we've talked about, that can't perfectly happen yet. And yet on that great day of judgment, when Jesus brings us to heaven, we will be united with him perfectly once and for all. Just like Adam and Eve had been way back in the Garden of Eden, like we originally talked about in our first lesson. They were at perfect unity with God. They were sinless in every way. We will be once more again. And that's what John describes here. He says there's going to be no more pain, no more suffering, no more tears, no more sorrows. God's going to wipe all these things away from us and he's going to make everything beyond our wildest imaginations. You see, here in this world, we suffer from sickness. We suffer from pain and disease as this consequence of sin. So when we ask the question, when will sickness be no more? We have to look 
beyond this earthly world because this earthly world is infected with sin. We need to look at what comes beyond because beyond God promises that he will make you and I perfect. God wants to give you and me a new perfect body for all eternity. And he tells us how he's going to do that. You know, one of my favorite petitions to the Lord's prayer is deliver us from evil. We pray that God would protect us here on earth, but ultimately the way that God delivers us from evil is by taking us from this evil world. And this is another way that God uses sickness. Sometimes God uses sickness to end our earthly life. Sometimes we refer to our earthly life as our time of grace. It's the time that God gives us here on earth to learn about him, to study his love that he has for us. But when our time of grace is ended, it means that the Lord Jesus is ready to bring us to himself in heaven. And that's what Jesus does when he uses a sickness to end our life. It can be sad to lose someone that we love. Most of us and most of you listening have lost loved ones, whether it be a grandparent or a parent or even a child. It can be difficult to lose loved ones, to, never, to know we're never going to see them or be able to speak to them on this earth ever again. But what a comfort and a knowledge to know that when this earthly life ends, all those who believe in Jesus will be welcomed into heaven. Because that's what Jesus does. When death occurs, there is a separation that takes place. Your soul and your body are separated from each other. Jesus takes our soul and brings it to himself in heaven. But on Judgment Day, God makes the promise that Jesus will come again. In the same way that he ascended into heaven, he promises to come back again. But this time, he's going to bring with him all the souls of those who who rest in him. And he's going to reunite those souls with those bodies that were rotting in the ground. From the ground, Jesus will raise up all those who are dead. Just like Jesus raised from the dead on that first Easter morning, all those who are dead in the ground will be raised to newness of life, to perfection. That's how God's going to give us the perfect body, which means the body you have right now and the body I have right now is the body that we are going to enjoy in heaven forever. Job knew this in the Old Testament. The Old Testament figure Job, he said, This I know, that in my flesh I shall see God, and I shall behold him, and not another. With our very bodies, we will be able to see God. We will be able to touch our Savior Jesus, to see his handprints and the nails that pierced him. We will be able to know our God, even as we are now known with our perfect bodies. And so in a way, God is restoring the creation as he originally made it. We started this week by looking at the Garden of Eden, how Adam and Eve fell into sin, how they were perfect before that. But now, through all the work that Jesus did, by his living that perfect life from cradle to cross, by him dying on that cross to take away our sins, by him rising again on that third day, on Easter morning, as he said, because of all of this, you and I are now righteous before God and we have eternity in heaven prepared for us. God tells us that we can now go about our lives here on earth with that hope, with that peace that passes all understanding, knowing that no matter what comes our way, whether it's a pandemic or whether it's something small, we know that God is going to work all these things together for our good and that ultimately he will deliver us from evil, from this evil world, by taking us to heaven. So dear Christian friend, you do not need to be afraid of sickness. You do not need to be afraid of COVID-19 because you know that your God and your Savior has worked for you. He's worked in the past throughout human history to bring you right where you are today and to deliver to you this salvation so that you can know that heaven is prepared for you for all eternity. When will sickness be no more? When Jesus comes again. When's that day? We don't know yet. But when Jesus comes, we will be sure that that day is arrived. We look forward to that day. And the Apostle John ends his, his revelation by praying this important prayer that we will pray now as well. Even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Amen. 
Thank you for joining us this week on our Vacation Bible School journey through this discovery of what God has to tell us about sickness. We pray that it worked in your heart and the Spirit moved through the Word to help you to understand these important truths that God reveals to us. Please share this VBS with anyone who might have any questions, with anyone you're able to, and help them to learn and to realize what God has to teach them about sickness as well. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. For our last music class today, we've already learned all four of our stanzas to our hymn, Christ Be My Healer. But today I want to just take a moment and think about all four of those verses and how they all begin. Each one begins by asking Christ, our Savior, to be something for us. We say, Christ, be my healer. Cause my wounds both inside and out to be healed. Whether it's sickness of sin or sickness of the body, Christ is the one who heals us. The next verse we ask, Christ be my leader. Jesus, show me the way, how I should go through life. Take my hand and guide me and lead me through this life. In the third verse, we ask Jesus, Christ be my teacher. Lord, my heart is full of deception. The world all around me wants to deceive me as well. I need you to teach me. I, know I need you to be the truth. You are the truth, Jesus. Help and teach me what that is and show me the correct way to walk. And then finally, we asked yesterday, Christ, be my Savior. Wash me clean of my sin that I know exists through the blood that you shed on the cross. And Jesus answered all three of these requests to be, his, to be our healer, our leader, our teacher, our Savior. He tells us, yes. He tells us, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He tells us that if we go by him, we can come to the Father. And that's what today's lesson was all about, isn't it? About heaven, about what that is going to be like, how in heaven there will be no more tears or sorrow, no more crying or unhappiness, no, more, no need for the pain and the suffering we go through in this world. In heaven, we will be happy and perfect forever with Jesus, with Jesus who helped and guided us all along the way who through our earthly life was our healer, our leader, our teacher, and our savior. Let's sing all four verses of our hymn one more time. Yeah. 
Okay, girls, so do you remember how to say Jesus in sign language? That's right, this is Jesus. And why is this how we say Jesus? Because he died on the cross. Because he died on the cross. So you know this song. It goes like this. Oh, oh, oh. It goes, Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. That's not what we're doing. We're doing the whole world, and then we're doing it in his hands. Ready? Okay. So, girls, how strong is Jesus? How strong? Does he have bigger muscles than me? Yeah. Does he have bigger muscles than anybody? Yeah. Who does Jesus protect? Everybody! Everybody! So this song's about that. It goes like this. He's got the whole world in his hands. 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 Ready? He's got the wind and the rain in his hands. He's got the wind and the rain in his hands. He's got the wind and the rain in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. Ready? He's got the itty bitty babies in his hands. He's got the itty bitty babies in his hands. He's got the itty bitty babies. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got you and me, sister. In his hands, he's got you and me, brother. In his hands, he's got you and me, sister. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. Good job. So we learn in the Bible that Jesus lives in two places. Do you remember where he lives? In heaven and our hearts. In heaven and our hearts. So that's what this song's all about. It goes like this. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down where? in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. I have the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart to stay, and I'm so happy, so very happy. I have the love of Jesus in my heart, and I'm so happy, so very happy. I have the love of Jesus in my heart. I have the love of Jesus, love of Jesus down in my heart. Where? Down Where? in my heart. Down in my heart, I have the love of Jesus, love of Jesus, down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart to stay, and I'm so happy, so very happy. I have the love of Jesus in my heart, and I'm so happy, so very happy. I have the love of Jesus in my heart. I have the peace that passes understanding down in my heart. Where? Down Where? in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. I have the peace that passes understanding down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart to stay. Ready? And I'm so happy, so very happy. I have the love of Jesus in my heart. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I have the love of Jesus in my heart. Here comes a long one. I have the wonderful love of my blessed Redeemer way down in the depths of my heart. Where? Down in Where? the depths of Where? my heart. Where? Down in the depths of my heart. I have the wonderful love of my blessed Redeemer way down in the depths of my heart. Where? Down in the depths of my heart to stay. Where? And I'm so happy, so very happy. I have the love of Jesus in my heart, and I'm so happy, so very happy. I have the love of Jesus in my heart.
Good job. Wonderful job. Everybody, too. Good job. All right. How do you make a cross? Good. Olivia, let me see your cross. Now, how do you make a tomb? Good. Just like this. So here's how this song goes. It goes like this. Here's the cross. Here's the cross. Jesus died. Jesus died. Here's the tomb. <gasps> Empty tomb. Jesus lives. Jesus lives. Good job. So in the Bible, Jesus tells us that he is our good shepherd. What do shepherds take care of? Sheep. Sheep. They take care of sheep. So if Jesus is a shepherd, that means I want to be a... Sheep. Sheep. That's right. So this is one of our favorite songs. It goes like this. I just want to be a sheep. Ba, 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 ba. I just want to be a sheep. Ba, 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 ba. And I pray the Lord my soul to keep. I just want to be a sheep, ba, 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 ba. I don't want to be a Pharisee. A Pharisee? I don't want to be a Pharisee. A Pharisee? Because they're not fair, you see. Oh. I just want to be a sheep, ba, 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 ba. I just want to be a sheep, ba, 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 ba. And I pray the Lord my soul to keep. I just want to be a sheep, ba, 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 ba. I don't want to be a Sadducee. A Sadducee. I don't want to be a Sadducee. A Sadducee. Cause they're so sad, you see. Oh. I just want to be a sheep, ba 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 ba. I just want to be a sheep, ba 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 ba. And I pray the Lord my soul to keep. I just want to be a sheep, ba 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 ba. I don't want to be from Babylon. Babylon. I don't want to be from Babylon. Babylon. Because they babble on and on and on and on and on. Oh. I just want to be a sheep, ba 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 ba. I just want to be a sheep, ba 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 ba. And I pray the Lord my soul to keep. I just want to be a sheep, ba 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 ba. Good job. Good job. So, how do you say yes, sir? Yes, sir. That's right. So, here's how the song goes. I may never march in the infantry, ride in the cavalry, shoot in the artillery. I may never fly o'er the enemy, but I'm in the Lord's army. Yeah, yeah, yes, sir! I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir! I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir! I may never march, ride, shoot, or fly, but I'm in the Lord's army. Yeah, yeah, ah! Okay, everybody, let me see your lights. Let me see your light. The Bible says you are the light of the world, so we need to let our light shine. The song goes like this. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Ready? Hide it under a bushel. No! no. I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bushel. No. no! I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Don't let Satan blow it up. I'm gonna let it shine. Don't let Satan blow it up. I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Because this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Good job. All right, here's our last song for the day, and it's one of our favorites. It's called Father Abraham. So the Bible tells us that we're all children of Abraham, but that doesn't mean that we're all descended from Abraham. What it means is we are children of Abraham by faith. Abraham had faith that God would send a Savior, and we have faith in that same Savior. His name is Jesus. So this song tells us that we are all children of Abraham. Go like this, ready? Father Abraham had many sons, Many sons had Father Abraham, I am one of them, and so are you. So let's all praise the Lord. Right arm, Father Abraham had many sons, many sons had Father Abraham.
I am one of them, and so are you. So let's all praise the Lord. Right arm, left arm, Father Abraham had many sons. Many sons had Father Abraham. I am one of them, and so are you. So let's all praise the Lord. Right arm, left arm, right leg, Father Abraham had many sons. Many sons had Father Abraham. I am one of them, and so are you. So let's all praise the Lord. Right arm, left arm, right leg, left leg. Father Abraham had many sons. Many sons had Father Abraham. I am one of them, and so are you. So let's all praise the Lord. Right arm, left arm, right leg, left leg. Nod your head, Father Abraham had many sons. Many sons had Father Abraham. I am one of them, and so are you. So let's all praise the Lord. Right arm, left arm, right leg, left leg. Nod your head, turn around. Father Abraham had many sons. Many sons had Father Abraham. I am one of them, and so were you. So let's all praise the Lord. Right arm, left arm, right leg, left leg. Nod your head, turn around, sit down. Woo, good job, everybody. Wonderful job. Have a great day. Welcome to day five of our scavenger hunt. You made it to the last part of the last day of Vacation Bible School 2020. Congratulations. It's been really awesome to do this with you. Let's just focus in for this one last part, okay? We got to go find one more thing. So today our lesson was taken from the book of Revelation, where the Apostle John tells us a little bit about what heaven will be like. After we have lived our lives and God has called us home to be with him in heaven, what is that going to be like? And our question today was, when will there be no more sickness? And that is what John was telling us in our lesson for today, that heaven is a place where there is not going to be any more sickness. There's not going to be any more pain or fear or sorrow or death because those things will have passed away. It's going to be a wonderful place. And we can't wait to go and join Jesus in heaven. So today for our scavenger hunt, I want you to go and do two things. The second part is very important. The first thing I want you to do is to go out into the yard and get your hands dirty. Go find some dirt in the flower bed or the garden or in the yard and just get it all over your hands so that you can barely see the skin. So it feels all gross and dirty and yucky. Now part two of what I want you to do is to make sure you wash all of that dirt off before you touch anything. You don't want to get your furniture or your clothes or your house dirty. So make sure maybe you have a garden hose or a spigot on the side of your house that you can go and wash your hands under before you come inside. Just make sure that after you get your hands dirty, you're not getting everything else dirty by touching that with that nasty, dirty hands that you'll have. So I want you to go and do those two things, ask a parent for help if you need to, and then come back here, and then we'll talk about what that means for today. Did you do it? Did you find that dirt and go and get it all under your nails and in your hands? Ugh, yuck. Maybe you found an earthworm. That'd be gross. Well, this dirty, dirt, nasty hands that you had, that kind of reminds us of sin, doesn't it? We ask the question, when will there be no more sin? Well, here on earth, there is dirt. There is sin. We have it in everything that we do because we are sinful by nature. But because Jesus went to the cross and died for all of our sins, there will be a day when we're not going to have any of that dirt or filth or grime of sin that's stuck to us anymore when we die and we go to heaven to be with Jesus. It's going to be wonderful. There's not going to be any more sorrow or death or pain. There's not going to be any more of that filth of sin because we will be perfect and glorified 
just as God wants us to be, and we'll spend eternity with him there in heaven, praising his name. So when we look at the question, when will there be no more filth, no more sin? We thank God that there will come a day when he takes us to be with him in heaven, where there's not going to be any more of that filth of sin or coronavirus or any other sickness, because those things will have passed away. We pray. Merciful Father in heaven, we have so much to give thanks to you for here on earth. We thank you for this week of Vacation Bible School, where we, you have gathered us together to learn from your word and to ask important questions regarding sickness and illness, and especially about the disease of sin. Sin is a big problem for us, but it is not so anymore because Jesus went to the cross and took all of our sins away, dying the death that we deserve so that we could live with you in eternity, where there will be no more sin or death or pain. What a wonderful day to look forward to as we go throughout our earthly life. Grant us that as we look forward to that day, we might serve you to the best of our ability, taking the knowledge that you have given us through your word and through lessons like we learned this week, that we may apply those lessons to our lives and spread that gospel message of Jesus crucified so that sinners can be cleansed of that filth of sin to as many people as we know and as we'll hear it. Thank you, Jesus, for doing all of this for us because we could do none of it. And it is in your name that we ask all of these things. Amen. Thanks again so much, guys, for joining us for this week of Vacation Bible School. It's been awesome for me and Pastor Nauman and for Miss Matsky to come together and to put this together. So it's been a real privilege, and we hope that you enjoyed it as well. The Lord be with you throughout the rest of your summer, and we hope to see the rest of you soon in a classroom. The Lord be with you. Thank you so much for participating in our Vacation Bible School this year. It was a lot of fun having you here. We couldn't see each other in person, but I pray that you still had a lot of fun. Hopefully next year we'll be able to have an in-person Vacation Bible School. I want to say a quick thank you to everyone who was involved with the creation of all these videos and handouts. Thank you to Ms. Colleen Motsky, who put all the crafts together. Thank you to Vicar Drew Nauman for the work that he put in recording and, and editing and putting everything together. Thank you also to Mr. Matthew Kranz, who put all this on the website and made it available to everybody. It was a ton of fun. Hope you had a lot of fun. I especially want to thank all the parents out there, all the kids who participated, who shared your crafts online. I had a lot of fun doing this with you this week and pray that you can use this VBS and share it with other people too. If you had questions this week that were answered by this VBS, share it with somebody else. You don't have to be a little kid to learn these lessons and take these things to heart. God has a lot to tell us about sickness in his word. And most importantly, he tells us how can we can be rid of that sickness, and that's through his son, Jesus Christ. Pray that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ continues to be with you all. The Lord bless you and keep you. And always remember, Emmanuel, God is with you.